Law school cost me, drum roll please, $58,489. This amount includes three years worth of law school tuition and fees. Are you surprised by this number? Were you expecting something higher, like $100,000? In this video, I'm going to break down these numbers and explain how I funded my way through law school. If you're new here, hello, and if you're a returning friend, welcome back. My name is Mithya and I'm a lawyer practicing in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. On this channel, I share videos about the whole lawyer licensing journey and how I'm doing after the process. If you're interested in becoming a lawyer in Ontario, then please subscribe and join our community. Now let's get into the numbers. For some context, I went to the University of Windsor for law school and I'm a Canadian resident, so I paid the Canadian student fees that were charged by the school. So here's a breakdown of how much my first semester of law school cost me. Tuition cost about $9,700, with fees costing around $830. I also had to pay a $500 deposit to secure my spot when I first received my acceptance to Windsor Law. This was part of the tuition costs. Tuition for my second semester of law school cost me about $9,700, with fees coming in at $415. In the first semester of my second year of law school, I paid about $8,600 in tuition and $950 in fees. In my second semester, tuition cost me around $8,694 and I paid $465 in fees. My last semester of law school was completed virtually because of the pandemic and so I paid a bit less in fees. In the first semester of 3L, I paid about $8,600 in tuition and around $836 in fees. There was about a $56 deduction in my fees. In my last semester of law school, I paid about $8,600 in tuition and about $445 in fees after a $43 Reduction. Now let's get into how I paid for law school. Number one is go to a cheaper law school. If finances are a priority and you'd like to keep costs low, then consider applying to law schools that offer lower tuition fees. I firmly believe that it does not matter which law school you went to in Canada, as all law schools are geared to make you qualify to become a lawyer. The difference in pricing is largely due to reasons beyond the quality of education, such as the location and your student status, for example, whether you're an international or a Canadian student. For a list of the 10 cheapest Canadian law school tuition costs, check out this article by Canadian Lawyer. Keep in mind this article was written in 2023 and the fees may have changed since then. I went to the University of Windsor for law school which ranks 10th on this list with average tuition fees at $20,855 for two semesters or one year worth of studies. Number two is apply for OSAP. If you're in Ontario, then check to see if you qualify for the Ontario Student Assistance Program, which is a financial aid program that helps you pay for law school. OSAP offers funding through grants, which is money you don't have to pay back, and a student loan, which is money you need to repay once you're done school. When you apply for OSAP, you're automatically considered for grants and a loan. If you don't want to take out a loan and you're either a full or part-time student, you can decline the loan once your application is approved. Number three, apply for scholarships offered by your law school. Scholarships are basically free money. Yes, they may take some effort because some scholarships will require you to write a 500 word essay or to answer some few questions. And I know it'll take a lot more effort when you're busy with law school and all of the other deadlines, but a lot of students don't even bother applying because it's an additional thing to do or a deadline to meet, or students think that they wouldn't even qualify for the scholarships, so they don't even bother checking what's being offered. This means that many scholarships go unclaimed because either no one applied for it or the students who did apply for it did not meet the eligibility criteria. So you should definitely look into the scholarships that are being offered by your law school. While some scholarships require you to provide a written statement or an essay, there are other scholarships that just require you to meet certain eligibility criteria such as being a person of color, being in financial need, or receiving a certain grade in a specific course offered at your law school. At the time of making this video, 150 search results came up when I looked for Windsor Law Student Awards. Don't sleep on this free money. Do some digging and see what your law schools are providing in terms of scholarships. Enter essay contests. Did you write an essay for a law school course that you're super proud about? Did that essay receive high grades? If so, make that essay do double duty by submitting it to an essay contest. The Canadian Bar Association presents cash prizes to winning students who submit essays on a variety of legal topics, from aviation to elder law. Check out this website to see the different law categories and to see if you can enter for any of these contests. Work as a summer law student. Over the three years of law school, you have two summers where you can work as a summer law student. There are several different ways to find a summer student job, from on-campus interviews, online to cold calling. 
There's no requirement that you work as a summer law student, but it looks better on your CV, especially when you apply later for articling or lawyer positions. In my 1L summer, I found it very difficult to find a summer student law position, but there's no requirement in your first summer that you work in a summer law student position. Not everyone lands a legal job in their first summer, so it's no big deal if you don't. Instead, I found a law adjacent job at a children's aid society where I helped with admin and clerical work. I found this job through the Canada Summer Jobs program. Canada Summer Jobs is a government program that gives funding to trusted employers to help them create quality jobs for young Canadians. Every year, the Canada Summer Jobs program advertises these opportunities on JobBank. Apply for external bursaries. There's also lots of free money being offered even outside of your own law school. Many external organizations help law students by granting bursaries to those who qualify. The qualifications will vary depending on the bursary that you're applying to. Some may require proof of financial need, leadership qualities, commitment to the community through extracurricular activities, or receiving a certain grade in a specific course. I applied to the Federation of Asian Canadian Lawyers Ontario Laform Scholarship. It was a new scholarship offered by FACL and I was the first recipient of the award. I heard about this scholarship on Twitter and I didn't think much of it and just applied. So I was very surprised and happy when I received an email weeks later notifying me that I was selected for the scholarship. Look into the various legal associations and organizations in your community or even nationally to see if they offer similar financial assistance. There's so many out there, so here are a few to help you get started. There's the South Asian Bar Association of Toronto, the Women's Law Association of Ontario, and Bennett Jones Future Leaders in Law Scholarship Program. There's also your parents' work affiliations. My mom is part of a union through her work, and her union offers financial assistance to selected children of union members. I applied for it and didn't get it, but it was worth a shot. I also took out a professional student line of credit. I was shocked at how much the banks were offering me to pursue a law degree. I ended up accepting a $135,000 professional student line of credit with Scotiabank. I rarely used this account, but it was nice to have for emergencies. I pulled money out of this account and paid for things like tuition when my OSAP payments were delayed. Once I received the OSAP, I paid off the line of credit loan. And finally, I lived at home. My time living in Windsor for law school was cut short by the pandemic. Once classes went virtual, I decided to move back to my parents' home in the GTA and finish my law school virtually. This helped me save on cost of living expenses, such as rent and groceries. I have a good relationship with my family and living with your family is considered acceptable and even expected in many South Asian cultures. It was nice to be around family and to have that emotional and financial support while completing my last two semesters of law school. So that's how much law school tuition cost me and how I paid it off. Keep in mind, this amount does not include my cost of living expenses like rent, groceries, and moving costs to and from Windsor. It also does not include other expenses like purchasing a laptop. There are lots of figures online stating that law students typically graduate with north of $100,000 in debt. This doesn't have to be the case and I hope this video has given you a different perspective. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.